What I'd like to do today is I'd like to have kind of a state of the race conversation. Um, there's a lot of things that are going on in our community that, is, that are contributing to the problems that we have as, on a whole as a country, but they plague the black community even more than others. So I want to start out with the prison industrial complex and talk a little bit about some of the problems that have occurred over, I'd say, pretty much the past 20 years when the growth of the prison industrial complex started. And that includes the major corporations, Wack and Hutt Corporation and Corporation, uh, Corrections Corporation of America, that have started building prisons at a phenomenal rate in order to make a profit. Terry, would you like to comment? Well, I think that you're right. Uh, there has been a proliferation of the building of prisons, and uh, unfortunately, to some degree, it may be necessary based on the laws and the structures of government that we have currently. Um, there are more people in prison in the United States, I believe, than any other country in the world, uh, up to, I believe, it's uh, 2 million. I've, I heard the last, the last count, which is extraordinary. Uh, some of them absolutely need to be in prison. However, um, you know, what I've observed is that unfortunately the prison, the need for prisons does not begin with incarceration. Uh, I understand from uh, some uh, reports that they start to calculate the pop projected population based on third grade reading scores, which is not necessarily an inaccurate measurement uh, because if the people don't change or the children don't change those, uh, I guess, modalities of illiteracy, chances are the statistics show that the imprisonment is a high possibility. That's, that, that's very true. Danny? Well, uh, I just wanted to piggyback off a little, or touch on a little comment that he just made. But based on the third grade reading scores, that, yeah, that information came out, I believe, a couple of years ago that they're starting to test the kids. What kids are, or who are they testing? And what group are they testing? They're concentrating more so on people of color, I believe. And of course, the population in these prisons we inundate those prisons more so than colleges. Why are they steering us more towards prisons as opposed to going to higher education and giving us education? You go into the inner cities, the, um, the schools don't have the proper tools to provide edu the proper education that these kids need to further themselves in society or make themselves productive uh, citizens of this, of this society. Now you have the prisons and corporations, of course, getting involved in that because they see that that's big business and they can make money. So as a result, they build these prisons to house those individuals that they feel as though are a detriment to their society. Yeah. And the society, uh, uh, the utopian society that they mold for themselves. And, and it excludes us. Yeah, and it's sad because the whole no child left behind is, <laughs> is a fallacy. It really, we have an entire generation of people who are inundating the prison system and we only make up, I think, what is it, 12 percent of the population, but you know, 70 percent of the population is of color that's in the prison system. So it, 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 it's sort of, sort of like Terry said, it's setting us up to fail, where if at the very beginning you can't develop the skills to become literate, and that eventually turns into dropout rates increasing and things of that nature, then you can't get a job, especially now that we have a society where outsourcing is a major portion of, of business. And so the jobs that used to be available to people who were you know, less you know, literate than others are, are no longer available. I, I was, uh, excuse me, Terry, I didn't mean to dominate the conversation here, brother. Feel free. But, uh, I was watching the PBS News Hour yesterday, and they had actually discussed in California how the the prison population has exploded to the point where they want them to decrease the population of the prisons. How are they planning on doing that? You know, uh, just automatically out of the blue, cross their arms and then blink, and then all of a sudden the prison population is going to be decreased. They. These people and these corporations, of course, have a profit motive behind them. And, of course, it's doing us a disservice. And we, as actually, as, a, as people of color, have to not feed into that sort of trick, if you will, 
to, to house those prisons and make money for those major corporations. Yeah, and the history of that is California has always been the lead. California and Texas are very <laughs> interesting states. Indeed. California has taken the lead in that area where not only did they have the prisoners from California, but they started taking prisoners from other states. And as they built more and more prisons, they set up situations where there were for-profit type situations where sheriffs were sharing in profits with the people building the prisons as they um, took on people from other states in order to fill the beds that they had. And you know what's interesting about this? The situation, we talk about history a lot, and the situation parallels a lot of the history with the, the black codes and the Mississippi codes because uh, while we do have a sense of responsibility in terms of not doing the things that you know would put us in, in prison as a people, we also have situations where they they compound the situation where we look at the justice system, where mm -hmm. blacks are receiving harsher sentences for the same crime, so they wind up going into, into jail. Or we have just a general um, atmosphere where you don't get justice in the name of justice, and so we wind up filling up these uh, prisons a little bit sooner. But the, the parallel is there are a lot of times, well, the, the, the time during the black codes is they actually purposely jailed people in order to make money. Sometimes they actually put people in jail because they knew that they couldn't pay the fines, and as a result, they had to work it out, and they worked on the, the roads and things of that nature. It's, it's a parallel with present day, where now these corporations are using slave, well, you know, jailed labor, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for practically the same reasons.